So you've built a new computer, which you saw last time. You've got your old computer, but how do you tell which one is faster and by how much? So you've got two computers and you want to find out which one is better. This is where benchmarking comes in. For the process of testing these computers and probably any testing we do in the future, we've come up with a benchmark suite. As a scrapyard techie, everything has got to be either cheap or free. In this case, we've gone with free. Every benchmark chosen has to be free. The other criteria was that it had to be easily repeatable. So basically anything that was just click and run. You click run, you wait for the test to run, and then you get a result. Now there's two different types of benchmarks. There's synthetic, so programs that are purely just made as benchmarks, nothing else. And then there's real world benchmarks. So using a program that already exists and then measuring the performance from that. We've tried to pick a mix of both types of benchmarks, a few synthetic and a few real world. The real world ones aren't 100% real world, I guess. They had to fit within the criteria of click and run. So that was a little bit tricky. So our real world benchmarks we'll just call real-ish world benchmarks because they're not 100% real world, but they're pretty close. So on top of that, we haven't gone with the most advanced benchmarks. We've also used a few different versions of 3 Mark going back to 2001, wherever that runs which it didn't on these machines, because everything has got to be either cheap or free. That means some of the hardware is going to be older, and we're not going to wait for the latest version of 3D Mark to run on older hardware at one frame per second. Maybe we are, because that's just going to be painful. For the same reason, we've chosen not to run Time Spy in the latest 3D Mark either, because we're not looking at high-end hardware, and we're not looking at gaming performance a lot, but we need some kind of reference anyway. So now that all that's out of the way, more information. The benchmarking procedure. Well, that was rude. Okay, so this isn't exactly scientific. It's not like we're looking at one component, like just the CPU, like a 9900K. It's just, we wanna see how one computer compares to another, roughly. So the procedure is install Windows 10, clean install, nothing else. Any drivers are the ones installed automatically, or if there aren't any, then we get them straight from the manufacturer. All Windows updates are done and completed. Then after that, each benchmark is installed and run and results are recorded. In this instance, to even out the playing field a little bit more, each BIOS was set to defaults. The same RAM was used in each system. The same make and model of SSD was used in each system. And the same video card was used in each system. For those who have been following along, you already know that the new system is an AMD Ryzen 1700. It has 16 gig of DDR4 3200 RAM. We have a 250 gig 960 EVO Samsung NVMe SSD, and we have a four gigabyte Radeon RX 570. What we haven't covered yet though, is what the previous system was. So, this one, ta-da. You probably can't tell a thing from that. This is an Intel Core i7-7700K, and that's on an Asus ROG Strix Z270 chipset based motherboard. So that was anticlimactic. So what this means is we're looking at Core i7 7th gen versus first gen Ryzen. And just for the fun of it, we've thrown in the home office computer as well, which is an Intel Core i7-6800K on an Asus motherboard with an Intel X99 chipset. So. 6th gen i7, 7th gen i7, and 1st gen Ryzen. But, being that it's a 6800K and the X99 platform, 6 cores 12 threads in the 6800K, 4 cores 8 threads in the 7700K, and 8 cores 16 threads in the Ryzen 1700. So the expectation would be that the 7700K would be faster for single core stuff, and probably gaming, because higher clock speed, whereas the higher core and thread count of the 6800K and the Ryzen should be better for productivity. Anyway, that's a lot of chatting with not a lot of jokes, so probably time to have a look at some results. This is gonna take a while.
the gap wasn't as big as I thought it would be, but it was still there. More cores, more threads seem to help pull ahead with the productivity stuff as well. The one exception being PC Mark. Even though all the numbers were fairly close together, actually using the system to do a lot of the heavy stuff, like the video editing stuff, more cores, more threads definitely makes it feel different. It definitely feels smoother and stabler with more cores rather than less. The 7700K seemed to jump every now and then just a little bit while editing video, while the 6800K and the Ryzen both seem to handle it no problems. That's why those two are staying and the 7700K is on its way out. Hopefully that helps a little bit if you're trying to decide between a slightly older Ryzen setup or a slightly older i7 setup. Maybe not, but it was interesting anyway. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. If you liked what you saw, show us your thumb. If you didn't, leave us a comment and uh, tell us what you didn't like or what we could do better. If you want to follow along on social media, we're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And Mr. Scrapyard Techie and I do a retro gaming live stream on Twitch and YouTube every second Saturday night, 8pm Australian Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, thanks. Bye.